let's talk about plotting a cosine signal with respect to frequency instead of with respect to time. So suppose we have this cosine function here, 0.2 cosine 100t plus pi over 3, and I want to make a frequency plot of it. So the first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to convert it to a complex exponential because uh, eventually those are going to be easier to work with. So I'm going to rewrite this as a complex exponential. And the way that's going to work out, we know that has to have the form a e to the j omega t, where in this case, omega is our frequency of 100 radians per second, plus a conjugate of e to the minus j 100 t. And then we have to remember our definition for a, where a is k over 2 e to the j phi. All right, that is a complex number, or I guess we'll call it j theta. doesn't matter. Okay, so in this case, we have our k is equal to 0.2, and our theta is equal to <clears throat> pi over 3. So that's going to give us 0.1 e to the j pi over 3. So, um, so let's go ahead and, um, I'm sorry, let me say one more thing first. If a equals that, I just want to make explicit that a conjugate is going to equal k over 2 e to the minus j theta. That's by definition. That's what a complex conjugate is, which in our case will be 0.1 e to the minus j pi over 3. So let's think now about what a frequency plot would look like. So there's a couple ways we could do this, and I'm going to start with just uh, something that doesn't work, and then we'll think about a way to make it actually work. So on my frequency axis, I could put hertz, I could put radians per second. Uh, for now, I'm just going to focus on the frequency, okay? So I'm going to focus on everything that's in the exponent that's not the t. So really, this is going to be my j omega axis. So this will be my j omega axis, all right? And in this case, it looks like I have stuff at j omega equals uh, 100j and at minus 100j. Oops, let's, uh, we don't have to write the j. Okay, so I have information at plus 100 and minus 100. So now the question is what to plot on this axis. I know over here at 100, I have a, and over here at minus 100, I have a conjugate, but, but what does that mean, right? A has a magnitude and a phase, a conjugate has a magnitude and a phase, so it's not really clear for me how to go about plotting this. So I, the, the answer turns out to be that I can't do this in one plot. I actually need two plots. So let's go ahead and uh, create two sets of axes. So again, it's going to be a j omega axis. And the first axis is just going to be for the magnitude of A. So we know that at frequency 100, the magnitude is 0.1. So let's go ahead and draw 0.1. We also know that at frequency minus 100, we also have a magnitude of 0.1. So let's go ahead and draw that. So that's the magnitude plot. Now, we also have to do separately a phase plot, okay? We cannot do just one or just the other, right? We need to actually draw both plots in order to get all the information. Okay, so here's the phase angle of A. And once again, we still have energy at 100 and at minus 100 radians per second. Now, at 100, we have the phase angle of pi over 3. So let's go ahead and draw that. Here's a little stick. Okay, we have energy of pi over 3. And at minus 100, which is a conjugate, we have a phase angle of minus pi over 3. So we'll draw it like that, minus pi over 3. And there we go. Now. If I show you the two of these plots together, the magnitude plot and the phase angle plot, you now have all the information you need to rebuild your signal. Okay, So in other words, this tells you that you have 
a expression, a term that is e to the j 100 t. And it also tells you that you have a term at e to the minus j 100 t. And if you want to know how much of each term you have, well, the plus 100 term has a magnitude of 0.1 and a phase angle of pi over 3. And the minus 100 term has a magnitude of 0.1 and a phase angle of minus pi over 3. And then because you have two sticks that are summed together, the answer is their sum. And once you have that expression, you can work your way backwards to the original cosine that we started with, x of t. Okay, so this seems like a lot of work, but eventually this will become more fluid, a little bit more comfortable. Uh, so this is the idea about how you go about taking a signal with, with respect to time and doing a accurate, properly scaled frequency plot. So just as a challenge, um, Actually, before we get to the challenge, I'm going to point out something else that's interesting. Um, you know that if you have energy at 100, that energy is A, okay, which has some magnitude and some phase. Now, because everything is built out of cosines, if you have energy at 100, you're guaranteed to also have energy at minus 100. And that energy will be at a conjugate, which will have magnitude of K over 2, and magnitude and phase angle of minus theta. So what this means is that from a plotting perspective, the negative frequencies are sort of a little bit redundant. In other words, if I just show you the positive frequencies, you can completely infer everything that has to occur at the negative frequencies. So in other words, I could have just showed you this plot with a magnitude of 0.1 at 100 and a phase angle of what was it pi over 3 at 100 so I don't even need to show you the negative frequency axis I can just show you the positive frequency axis so it's not that the negative frequencies aren't there, it's just that they are sort of redundant, that you can just you can infer their values just by looking at the positive, uh, by the positive j omega axis. And the reason that we might omit the negative j omega axis is just to make the plot more compact, right? So just so that I, I have less stuff for the reader to look at. They just can look at the positive plots and then infer what's happening on the negative j omega axis. All right, so now let's get to the self quiz. Uh, suppose I show you the following plot. Oops. So self quiz. Suppose I show you uh, a magnitude plot that looks like this. So this is the magnitude, and it will be let's try two pi two twenty five. I'm sorry, not two twenty five. Let's try just two pi. 25 with a magnitude of 0.1 and another term at 2 pi 75 with a magnitude that is three times that. Let's say that that one, or double that rather. Nope. Sorry, on my notes I had 0.5. So let's say this is 0.5. Not quite scaled, but okay. And for the phase angle plots, Let's go with something like j omega 2 pi over at 2 pi over 25. Sorry, 2 pi 25. This is the phase angle plot. We have a phase angle of minus pi over 4. And at 2 pi 75, we have a phase angle of pi over 5. So your challenge to see if you really understand this video is step one, determine the cosine expression, which in this case is going to be a sum of cosine expression. So determine x of t uh, with respect to time. Right? In other words, write the cosine functions as a function of time. And step two, 
plot the signal in MATLAB. And if you can do that, you probably have a pretty good understanding of what's going on in this video.